Kevin. Welcome to Tucson, to with Crystal Classics Tucson. Um, Dave, you seem to have finished your glass of wine well, already, I have but a, cheers I have anyway. A, I, have a, yeah. I have one sip in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very excited because um, uh, we're here at Westwood Look, and two days ago we bought a, uh, a collection for one of our very good customers in Los Angeles, who uh, unfortunately is not doing so well. Um, oh. But uh, he said, look, Ian, can you please come over and pick up the minerals? So uh, one of our guys drove over, wrapped the collection and bought it back. And we're yeah. going to present it for the first time ever here at Westwood Look. And uh, we is. haven't sold one specimen out of it yet. I and see. So for the first time, you're going to see a, a virgin collection. It's a long time since you've seen a virgin, Dave. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a fabulous chunk. Great big octahedron on there. Look at this thing. Yeah, wonderful. Because of modifications. Yeah, it. it's all modified. Beautiful. Even you know, the jemmy little windows on, yes. the, uh, on the faces. Is this English? No, this is a Chinese. This oh, is a, this is know, Chinese. China, oh, okay. You know, China's produced some, some of the world's That's finest fluorites in the last few decades. Fantastic. And, uh, One of the great oh, European beautiful. classics. I won't lift it up because it's quite heavy. Yeah, but sure, this I is, understand um, that. This is one of the fabulous, fabulous I'm trying to think, where have I there. seen fluorite blue like this? This rich sky blue, I can't remember. Yeah, this I've is seen. from the uh, Le Berg mine. Mm. In, uh, near the, it's Pyrenees in the south of France. It's very famous, beautiful, growing on the white quartz. Mm. Little chalk of pyrite dotted over it. But what a beautiful, beautiful oh, display wonderful. specimen. Well, that rich shade of blue, it varies. This is from the famous Rogerly mine in, uh, in England. Fantastic. And, uh, look at the, beautiful look at the green. Color beautiful emerald green. Yeah, beautiful luster. Yes. So, uh, this, this next case over here, um, I'm going to get Diana to talk you through this because, uh, you know, this is um, one of her passions are these beautiful little miniatures and uh, thumbnails. So she's done a whole case. Um, which uh, Brian's gonna, well, she's gonna take you through now. What actually the, the intention with this case is, is that uh, some of the collectors, they obviously are more into the little perfect, cute miniatures, whether they are colorful or some rare species. They really want, they, they don't have so much space and they want to still establish a really nice collection and those miniatures are really very sought after. So we have various different uh, miniatures that we put in this case. So we have a shelf just with gold specimens. Yes. There's a new find uh, from Nevada with oh, nice little okay. gold specimens that we displayed here amongst some Californian golds and Romanian gold over here. Very good. Um, it's a mixture of miniatures on a bottom shelf, uh, a lot of Sumap specimens. Um, we bought not long ago the John Schneider Sumap collection oh, and he man. was really very good in choosing perfect little miniatures and very, very various species and various shapes and Sumap is an ideal ground to start or an ideal location to start collecting sure. miniatures because you have so many varieties, so many different species of minerals, so many colors, yeah. variations from crystals. So that's really good. That and then sure we have a couple of um, Can uh, Canadian classics and American classics, uh, North and South America classics. That what is that in the middle? That's a beautiful miniature. That whole this one. Really, sir. That That's a that. Vivianite from Ukraine, of all oh, things. Vivianite. Okay. Yes. Look at that. I've never seen anything like it, no, and it's I just like either. a really perfect spray. Apparently, it was like a sphere, and that's like a half of a sphere. Turn it around. You see so the crystallized, matrix, yeah, yeah. yeah, the matrix, but you see determinations of yes. the crystal spray also on the matrix. That's but fantastic. Fantastic. And that is what it is all about. So if things don't need to be large that's specimens right. in order to be really sought after. And that's, that's what right. we discovered. So we dedicated a full case. Yeah. There's a Groschler garnet oh, from that's a lovely thing. Jeffrey. Yeah, Isn't that beautiful. Just a perfect miniature. Yeah. Yeah, miniatures are a beautiful thing because you oh, can yeah. very it, nicely it, display them in not a lot of room. So if you just have space for one small cabinet, yeah. then you can have still a sizable collection with a nice selection of classic minerals, new finds, and all sorts of uh, 
yeah, yeah. colors and localities. We certainly yeah. noticed that there is a whole new market to miniatures, um, especially since we bought a new collection. We bought a Bert Kessler collection, and he only collected miniatures. Okay. And we made this public, and we had we were inundated with requests of. Uh, that people wanted to know what's in that collection mm -hmm. and it has been very very popular very good, and yeah. we've gained a lot of new customers especially good. also from from Japan they seem very to good. really favor okay. uh, miniature specimens so yeah. it was a great learning curve for us That's because right. it, it seems to be sometimes as a mineral dealer you sort of um, neglect the miniatures yeah. Well, I hand you over to Ian and he will continue the tour of okay. our fantastic cases. It's Crystal Classics tag team here, Dave. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I do know who you'd rather talk to, but you're stuck with me for this case. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is Welcome to Africa. So, uh, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the things, most of what's in here is African. Um, yes. We, uh, we have the, obviously the uh, Uruguayan amethyst in, in there, yeah. but uh, most of the rest of this is from, from Africa. And uh, one of the things that we're really well known for are African classics. And yeah. uh, we were really things. happy to get this this little baby. Yeah, this came in the, uh, the new collection that just arrived. And Fantastic. What a wonderful little road of, road yeah, of cluster. Yeah, road from of side. Great color. Super yeah. luster, wonderful terminations. What it really makes this great is that you have large, above average uh, size crystals on this and having it in a miniature like this. See, sometimes the once in a while you'd see a great big piece with this size and then small ones around and here the whole thing is just a jewel of a thing in this size. Yeah, for the, for the size it's one of the nicest we've ever had. And, yeah. uh, you know, we've had bigger and we've had better. I can't is, remember uh, seeing a better miniature. Lovely. It's the yeah. best one I've seen. The miniature is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Really it's wonderful. the be be best stuff I've seen. Okay, look at this for a color combination. Color combo. Uh -huh. uh, look at that. Beautiful. Minerals can be so fantastic. Oh, you know, that's why. Etringite here from uh, Entraining, and this is and a, a Kabochian a... calcite from uh, Bashamba West in Congo. But yeah. this is incredible. I, I know a lot of people, and I talk to a lot of people that are not in the mineral collecting world, and they just they just can't believe it. So, this is a very famous specimen. This belongs to. Um, I don't have my glasses on. What is it? It's a fabulous baldenite crystal, and it's one oh, huge Ooh. crystal. Nearly was it nearly three quarters of an inch, yeah. half an inch. Yeah, I would say that's and, three quarters. Um, and it has epitaxial baldenites coming off it. Unbelievable. And, uh, this actually won the oh, Lidstrom Trophy okay. at the Tucson Show in 2012. How about that? So when John exhibited his collection, you know, what, a, what a provenance, so yeah, 2012. Isn't that the truth? It's fantastic. It's really nice to have, uh, you know, like this. This is the full history going way back on, on this piece. Good. So John was meticulous with his, uh, with his label. Now, um, who was it, John who? This is John Schneider. Oh, John Schneider. Yeah. Okay. So these are the all the original, um, all the original labels. Colt, it was Colton Davis belonged to. So it's from Colton Davis, okay. who thought it was Brochantite. Okay. So it was analysed, and it turned out that it um, it turned out to actually be one of the world's finer Belgianite crystals. Holy cow! So this dates right back probably to the 1950s, and wow. it's been exhibited all over the world. This is from the. Um, the African uh, mineral collection uh, that was exhibited in uh, Munich. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is 2012. This was exhibited in, Munich, in the special exhibit. So it's lovely to have a specimen with all that provenance. Absolutely, kept with it. that's very you important. Know, you don't just buy the specimen; you you buy the history. So. That is correct. Very important. This is very very rare. There was only the one pocket of gem scoridites found in uh, scoridite okay. in the Sumeb mine and. Um, this is one of the largest I've ever seen. The colors. I've never exist. seen a larger one. Yeah, and fine. Yeah, I think I've seen a large, not quite as large as this, but this is re really beautifully covered. Uh, that's a fantastic so specimen. crystals. This is oh, a yeah, really the size of that. Yeah, that. it's huge. Yeah, for scoridite. Wonderful. So this would have come out in the probably late seventies, early eighties. Yes. And, uh, very, very. I remember when they hit this pocket. And I was a day late and a dollar short, and I never got one. That's so we wonderful. just bought this uh, just before Christmas in Austria from the uh, Hugo Waldner collection. We bought uh, we bought his collection and good. more Suma, you know, fabulous, very good, fabulous things. You really did have the killers, yeah. 
Very simple mineralogy, just uh, mimetite, little mimetite uh, sprays. Little, and little mimetite. And yeah, and that's uh, that's really pretty. I was going to ask you, what are the white? I didn't know what. I knew this was malachite. So uh, mimetite. Well, that's cool. I and like if you that. Can look really closely. Some of these. Um, see some of the, uh, the the malachites are pseudomorph in cuprite. You can just see the octahedral formation of the cuprite. Under How some about of that? Oh, it's a neat. Beautiful combination. Very much so. Yeah, that's that's wild. Thing. This was um, a specimen I sold many many years ago. This is an azurite from the uh, the very famous Easter pocket in the uh, from the Sumer mine. Beautiful. Yeah, collected in the 1980s. How Little about Saru that? Sites here. And uh, the Easter pocket has a very characteristic form to it. Yeah, that's a really so, different. This was from the new collection, so this, uh, you know, this just came back onto the market after many years of being in this collection. Wow, boy, that is something. This is a really cool thing. We all see a lot of azurines on the market. Oh yeah, from, look at that uh, thing from Malawi. Yes. But, um, this That's is an exceptional wonderful. one. Yeah, fully terminated. Really? Oh yeah, totally terminated. Yeah. And these little brown crystals, these are little zircons. Oh, zircons. Yeah. Oh, okay. Growing on the feldspar. Just a, How about a lovely that? combination piece. Oh, Very rare yeah. to get something of that quality. That's right. Yeah. No, that's an A-plus mineral. This is a really neat thing. Mm. I bought um, one of our good friends... Uh, <clears throat> Um, Carla Costa has very, very good taste in uh, minerals, and mm -hmm. we bought most of his uh, collection from him just after Denver. And uh, if Carl has a piece in his collection, you know it's going to be very fine. How about and, that? And uh, you know, very simple mineralogy, just uh, so some what is it? With it's a quartz with a quartz crystal. Yeah, Shatterkite. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, that's something neat. really interesting. Yeah. Very different. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, let me show you another classic. We've been, yeah. you know, the other side of Crystal Classics is, uh, <clears throat> you know, is appreciating the, the old and the rare. Yes. You know, and this is uh, this is a great American classic. Oh. You God. know, this goes back to the uh, probably goes back to the, to the uh, mid eighteen hundreds. I'd say Kleiner Clays. Oh, the, Kleiner Clays. Yeah, okay, look at that. The Mammoth Mine in Tintic, Utah. One of oh. the, you know, one of the great American, oh, yeah. locations. Very much um, so. Originally in the New York State Museum. Again, nice old tickets with it. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and they're so important. It really helps you know, that's, to uh, have that with the specimen. Yeah. Got the little, uh, the little uh, balls of Kleiner clays. Right. Do you know what? When they mined this, they discovered this back in Cornwall in the in the mid 1700s. Oh. And God. if you think about that time, there were no mineral names, so uh, they right. came up with great descriptive. Uh, Descriptive names for these beautiful minerals they yes. were finding. So, first found in Will Gorland, they, they had no mineral name for it. So, what is this? What is it? Yeah. They call it beetle ore. So, this was yeah. basically beetle ore because they look like oh, little black beetles. I so, see. Uh, and that's interesting. No, that's and you can fantastic. always tell the um, the uh, the mammoth mine uh, kind of clays from the Cornish ones because this I has see. a lot of azurite with it and uh, I see. some barite, which you don't you don't get in Cornwall. But, I got uh, yeah, yeah. American history, we appreciate oh, it. Oh, yeah, very much so. So if we move on to uh, okay. the jemmy cabinet, then Diane is going to tell you all about the wonderful gem minerals we have in here, because it's quite a lot of new ones, and oh. uh, my wife, being my wife, loves gems. So. Oh, yeah. That's our gem cabinet. So what we always try to do is design it so that the colors flow, that you have a nice overview of what we actually have as a selection. Mm. And by theming actually all of our cases more or less, that makes it possible. So we try to keep all the gem minerals together or localities together. And that makes it possible also to for our customers to come in here and say, well, I'm more into the gem minerals, so yes. I go to this cabinet first. Yeah, good and point. You find yeah. Um, a nice selection from Brazilian topaz, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. So these are 
nice classic specimens. Imperial topaz. Imperial topaz. Yes. It gives a dash of color, mm -hmm. and it is really something that you won't see very often, not in that size. Yeah. I found out the other day a really cool fact that when you have them under UV, they actually are cherry red. They fluoresce That's right. cherry red. That's right. So that is the fun part, I think, about yeah. dealing also with minerals, that you never stop learning, mm -hmm. and especially when you don't have someone that comes in here and says, well, I'm only interested in fluorescent minerals, mm -hmm. you think, hmm, wouldn't really know where to start with this. Yes. And then you learn things mm -hmm. like this, that an imperial topaz, mm -hmm. when they are of good quality, yes. usually have a really nice fluorescence of a cherry, mm -hmm. red or pink. We actually have uh, somebody that sources and, and works with us and sources minerals mm -hmm. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Hence, we had this really nice find from the Cruzeiro mine yes. with the little quartzes uh, neatly stacked on one side, which mm -hmm. gives the specimen a, a really nice, refreshing look. But in Brazil, this happens still today. If they find a nice pocket of gem tourmaline, it usually is straight sourced, cut up and made into a gemstone. And the gemstone market pays Really oh, good they'll prices. pay the so price that as a mineral try to stop them. Yeah. dealer, you can hardly compete with that's this. Right. So, and that is what that's a lot right. of people don't put into perspective, how, that's right. how difficult it is to source them really good yeah. displayable gem minerals. That's right. That's um, right. Of course, we need to talk about the Heliodors. Um, from last year, uh, the viewers might remember that we told them that we were involved in the Ukraine projects with the Heliodor yes. mines. So hence, we have a nice selection of Heliodorus, really not so many do. I've small never specimens, seen anything like it. but nice large specimens. One of my favorite specimens is actually the large guy up here, okay. which reminds me of a little piggy. When you look at it, oh, there's yeah. like his nose and there's the little ears yeah, really? and his little oh, piggy the, the tail. Feet here, oh, this is too yeah. much. Isn't that cute? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> so, and then it, this is great. So, yeah. I mean, this is a nice large crystal it hasn't got the crazy edging like right. for example the specimen over here mm -hmm. but the color this limey green is really sought after and you hardly see on display large heliodor specimens anymore the biggest find was That's obviously true. the find that was made in 89 90 yes and then was featured extensively in the mineral magazines all over the world but mm -hmm. since then there has not been any significant finds and cut them all or if they any get it they'll cut them on display that's mm -hmm. right that's beautiful yeah this is truly magnificent because what you have is like a wheel here all the way through i've seen them like this could be larger and what have you but this is a magnificent thing and my morganite from San Diego County was considered by most experts the finest morganite specimen, not for cutting, what have you, uh, in the world. That thing was a perfect thing and so forth, but they made this new discovery. This is better than it. These have better color. Yeah. The color of these are fabulous. And then with the matrix, so here you not only have a killer uh, <clears throat> morganite crystal, but you have the beautiful uh, matrix of albite and quartz. Albite with here. quartz? Yeah. I'm yes. anxious to see this thing. So Look at that. Really great color. You have the quartz, and then you have those two separate crystals growing out, so next to the main chunkier crystal. And that is from Barra de Salinas in Brazil. Yes. And this came out, uh, this came out very recently. Oh, and, um, okay. It's uh, remarkable because it has absolutely they didn't no break repairs. it. They didn't break it. Yeah. It's very rare to get something like that. With Especially no with the pencil. Yeah. It's one thing to see these broken, but here that survived. Mm -hmm. So they, they both survived. Yeah. It's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. No repairs at all. Fantastic. No, that that's a wonderful piece. And that one's quite interesting, David. Because, yeah, uh, bring that, that out. Uh, I see it's a that was actually crystal. found uh, only a few months ago in the. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, the five two one. Uh, Look at that thing. There you go from the five two one pegmatite in uh, in Volodarsk, Ukraine. So oh, yeah, you can see. Look at the. That I was going to ask yeah. you that is is this new find because I've this seen this many. New. Yeah, it's this wonderful. Is that is fantastic. Now, how does this look like in sunlight? Have you had these in sunlight at all? Yeah, and no, that is wonderful. And if you see the. Uh, you know, very characteristic. Oh, the yeah, they're, they're the wonderful. The Can't beat it. Yeah. Fantastic thing. Especially. Yeah, look at that. And it's very difficult to get it right in the color so oh, that you can yeah. actually see the green. Beautiful thing. I think, yeah. 
Looks yeah, good to it's me. It's definitely terminated. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly is. I think this, this looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not repaired. Mm -mm. A delicate pastel like that color. That's, yeah. That's really difficult to get. It's almost like an ice blue. Yeah. Yeah, like an ice blue and just a delicate color to it. In here, there's a lot of um, a lot of new fluorites, a lot from this new collection, and uh, also very excitingly, some of the uh, the finest from the new uh, the, the new Frostily pocket, which um, which is a pocket we discovered just before Christmas in um, Diana's own mine, the Diana Maria mine in uh, Weirdale. What I like about this, and I put it back in, of course, the lighting. But what I like about this is really got a lot of emerald color to it. And that's very rare, generally speaking. When you see green tourmalines, they, they may be variants of shades of uh, green, but when you get emerald color like that, it's a fantastic thing. And that is what we certainly experienced with this new mine, since we put it underground. And it was a surface mine when we started it, and then we drove it underground. So we're now working underground. Wow. And we noticed that the further we get in, the fresher the material gets. So the crystals are really gem, gem, gem clear. They're yes. like little, little windows, picture windows. Yeah. They're very yeah, gem. Right, right, right here I'm seeing through this. That one right there. Yeah, look at this. That bunch right in there. Look at how gemmy that is. And occasionally Color. we also find uh, um, little water bubble inclusions in the oh, crystals, okay. which makes it even more interesting. Yeah, but don't put it in a hot case. They could, we don't. Oh, yeah, you no. got to be careful if you display that uh, a yeah. hot show or something. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. New and when we usually, don't when we usually, when you find those in the cavities, they are all packed out with real thick clay, I and see. it's we need a lot, a lot of water and, and very careful extraction to actually be able to get a specimen. So, like is this, this an example that you cleaned yourself, or was it, I personally know? don't clean the specimens, but oh. I do go underground as well, and of yeah. course, like to collect minerals. There's yeah. nothing more therapeutic than being underground, washing right. the clay out, and seeing the tip of one of those specimens emerging. Yeah. And and you as know. you proceed further, it's That's like, right. wow, it's so That's great beautiful. to see that. Absolutely and then, beautiful. Now that we are underground, you don't see the full potential to, of those specimens exactly. because when you actually go to the daylight, mm -hmm. they turn blue because they're daylight fluorescent. So I see. You, there's a marvelous effect if we would take it to the sunlight. Oh, yes, yeah, totally different. It goes right into a rich purple. And you have a little bit of a background green, uh, probably another section of a, a greener section. But you know, look at the difference between them. Um, this is the Diana that you see at shows, okay? <laughs> a little bit glamorous. And then, you know, this, this is Diana at home. That's Diana having a good time. That's what she likes to spend her spare time doing. In her own mind, I gotta see this. digging out fluorite crystals. Oh, <laughs> that's, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's that what Diana neat. Bruce does in her spare time. Yeah. So this new pocket zone at the mine has been um, has been really incredible because um, before we started digging at, uh, at this new location, um, it was almost unheard of to get oh, uh, the combination right. of these beautiful right. gem twins Look of fluorite. This. Um, in with combination the, with calcite, you know, and you get these beautiful growths. Look at that. Wonderful. Wonderful combinations. Yeah. This, just uh, look at that. This combination with the calcite is just magical. And if you look, the, you know, the, the interior sparkle it's is just uh, amazing. The reflections are incredible. Oh, that's a major yeah. discovery. One of the interesting things that um, we find is that uh, when we get the calcite in combination with these gem twins yes for some reason the calcite very rarely grows on the gem twins so it's it's a mineral Doesn't collector's dream them. because the, exactly. you have the white with the the um the, the gem twin fluorites poking yes. through and uh, you exactly. know we're not taking the, the calcite off they naturally come out yes. like that that's fabulous and then well, sometimes in the same pocket of a few inches away you can get the um the fluorite totally without any calcites at all. Yeah. And then you get this beautiful gem twins, crazy color, yeah. growing up from the base of the, uh, 
the small non-twinned crystals. Beautiful. So next we have this uh, this exquisite Spanish fluorite from yes. uh, the Emilio mine in Asturias in Spain. Okay. And uh, we've got these beautiful gem, beautiful. gem water, water clear, clear yeah. fluorites uh, with, with barite. And uh, I'm not going to lift it out because it's you quite right, heavy. Exactly. But it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that is a beautiful example oh, it is. of a Spanish it's, It just uh, has very little color, just a light, I, I don't know how to describe it, a bluish I would say a light bluish gray. Yeah, almost yeah, ice. Very you know? pale, very yeah. pastel. And then this is, uh, before we move on from fluorides, this is just That's beautiful. That's beautiful. What a fabulous yeah. small cabinet the specimen. La, La Collada, just That's wonderful. Zoning. Wonderful, wonderful. And that's all from the same mine? No, this is La Collada. Oh, okay. Very close to Emilio, but uh, okay. just, just a lovely thing. Beautiful yeah. thing. So our next cabinet is mainly... Um, Many European classics, uh -huh. of which uh, you know our company is perhaps um, best known for. And uh, I see fabulous 311. things in here. That caught my eye right away. That thing is fabulous. Yeah, this is a major museum specimen. This is a wonderful pyromorphite from God. the Farge in France. Wonderful. Yeah. Very famous pocket uh, epitaxial uh, mustard. Yeah, um, just plain different. Crystals growing yeah. over the big green ones. No, I looked at it and I said, I don't know if that's pyromorphite or what. And then the label I saw, it was pyromorphite. But that's very unusual. Never seen anything like that. Well, it's a I'm, bit of fun. Like it's, a staining or something. It's lovely. The it, color is... Uh, it's gorgeous. The color is so strong. Yeah, look that. at that. Now, have you tested it? Do you, do you know what that it's is? Like, it's basically a cobaltian calcite. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Post mining, you know, these, yeah. this is uh, this has grown in the mine workings yes. over the last hundreds of years. Perhaps there was some decomposing nickel ores and uh, had yeah. enriched the uh, the mine waters and deposited this beautiful, beautiful cobalt. Uh, Unbelievable! And it's also cleanish. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see cracks running through it, and it looks like it could be about that thick yeah, of beautiful. this color. No, oh, that's a beautiful thing. We all know um, Nappenwald, Nappenwald uh, epidotes, but uh, of all places, this is from Greece. From Greece. This is How just exciting. an extraordinary find. Uh, and we bought this from the geologist that collected it many years ago. Wow. And, uh, you know, I had never had a good one from here before. Wow. From Maria. Greece. That's wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's a major piece. Lovely composition. Oh, wonderful. This is one of the nicest ones we've had for a, a long time. In fact, this is the, the nicest one we've had since the last time we sold it. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> we sold this again many years ago. Um, oh, and you got it back. And this has just come back. It's one of the real European classics. Um, these started coming out in, the, I guess, the 1700s, 1800s. And... Uh, very rare to get something as well formed and sharp as That's this. what I like about this. You know, it's, you'll see around the show these great big, I guess they're calcites also. I don't know if you've seen them in the restaurants. And, mm. uh, 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 Brian, you, you know what I'm talking about. The great big things. And somebody was explaining to him. What I like about this is the sharpness of the crystals. These are real nice sharp crystals where these other ones are quasi, mm -hmm. mo mostly kind of like betrothal looking. That's a beautiful thing. Yep. So one of the great things about uh, the Lafarge mine in France is the variety of colors that the, uh, the pyromorphites yes. um, look from there produce. Look at this. This is all from the same mine. You know? All and the this. same. That so look at those. Fantastic. Totally different, all three. Okay, same mine. Same mine. Different finds. <laughs> Green, yellow, yes. brown. You know, one of the great mineral locations in the world is oh, the forest in France. Absolutely. That's beautiful. You know, no, uh, no mineral show for Crystal Classics is right. uh, complete without, you know, without... Very much so. Our great, Euro, our great British classics. So, uh, you know, yeah, but these are all things British, from the... Um, yeah. That's a beautiful spread. Isn't that neat? Yeah, they're really neat. Yeah. Yeah. The Egremont yeah, like uh, mining field up in West Cumbria, uh -huh. very famous in the 19th century, 18th, 19th century for uh, uh, its fine gem calcites. Yes. The fabulous kidney ores that came yeah, from there. Yeah, kidney ore, that's what they call this. Yeah, and then these beautiful combinations from the Kermit mine of the, the quartz and the specular hematite. Yes. 
barite. Yeah, great uh, Mowbray mine barite. Mm -hmm. That's a calcite. Fabulous calcite twin. Beautiful, beautiful twinning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Great English All classics. All from there, yeah. Great the English classics, classics, absolutely. You know, I bought this from a, um, a collector in Switzerland, um, just outside of Zurich, and it's just lovely. He bought it in the 1980s, and it's very rare to get, yeah. you know, a beautiful stalactitic uh, amethyst in that condition. You right. know, it's a uh, nice composition, beautiful in your face display. Fabulous. Yeah. A real eye stopper. Lovely thing. Yeah. And what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, it's on just that? a, you know, we all know amethyst, there's a lot, always a lot of amethyst around, but occasionally you'll get something really lovely like Yeah, that. see, it's so complete all the way around. See, that's what's nice. Yeah, look at that thing. It's like a star, outside star here. Yeah, that's beautiful. They used to call these knobs. I know you always <laughs> like to get your hand on a knob, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Complete mental cases. <laughs> Look at the side. This is fabulous. Look at this. And what is it, uh, stephanite? No, you've got to guess. Ooh, peridrite. This may take a while. Um, if you start beginning of the alphabet, Dave, and work your way through, we're, gonna, we're just going to wait. Polybase, I... A canthite. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Fabulous. Yeah, this is oh, from uh, wonderful from the Hong Dam mine in Look China. At Fabulous thing. Fantastic. No, I'm not real good at mineralogists and all that. Just show me a good rock. I'll tell you what it is. But remembering chemistry of it and all that, never got into that. You have something to show me? I do, David. This is uh, this is a little bit of fun. You know, okay. quite often with the uh, the mining project, we get. Uh, Oh. We got specimens that are really nice that just don't quite make the grade. Oh, and, uh, you see our, that? Um, Look at that. Chris, our head of uh, our laboratory, yeah. used to be a stonemason in a, stone mason in now, a, in a previous that life. Interesting. And, uh, he uh, came up with this concept. Yeah. So um, over the next few years, we're going to develop this because it's been very well received. Oh, I think you it's can do fantastic. You an accent wall in your house. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, a, a real like conversation and, yeah. piece for fabulous, sure. Yeah. You That's do a whole beautiful. wall of this. And if you look, we've got the gem twins yes. here, and this is quartz from the mine. Right. So this is, uh, yeah, you could have a piece of Diana Maria in your own bedroom. Well, that's all right. That's fun. <laughs> well, this is probably the most serious uh, What's Hot in uh, Anywhere interview we've given for a while. We behaved very well, yeah, very especially much since so. you're, you're, you were so inebriated. So uh. <laughs> Right. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Keep it up. Yeah, that wonderful collection, you guys. I do that one more time. That did sound kind of funny. <laughs> oh, that, that just made me out to <laughs> <laughs> yeah.